Today, I'm gonna to be looking at the most requested products in my comments section. It is the Last Code 2.0. You guys have been asking for this over and over, so here we are. We're gonna find out if this product is just as good as everybody says, or if it's hype. Because we're just testing one product today, we're gonna to be focusing on this side. Now, as usual, I've prepped this with a light polish. Now, the first thing we wanna do is shake this bad boy up, and let's give it a couple of nice, healthy spritzes. Now, we're gonna spread all this goodness. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, they do tell you that you can do multiple coats, but as usual, we're doing one for our testing. That's what we do with all the products. Now, what we're gonna do is let this bad boy cure for 24 hours. Now that we've got the product applied and we're just waiting for the cure time, let's talk about how easy it was to use. So, if you're tuning in for the first time, I score slickness, visual appeal, and ease of application as a pass or fail. So we either give it a point or we don't give it a point if it fails. This product was a truly easy spray on wipe off solution. Just like they said, it was very simple, no streaking, no mess. So this product absolutely gets one point for ease of use. Also as a quick reminder, there are links to all the products we're testing today down below in the description. They're Amazon affiliate links. And if you click through those, you're able to purchase the products or anything at all on Amazon. And I get a very small commission that helps me run the channel. Here we use this panel along with my gloss meter to determine if the product is improving or hurting the gloss. This side of the panel has not been treated and this side has. This side reads around 94 gloss gloss units and we will find out where this treated side is. It has cured for 24 hours just like the panel. First thing we want to do is turn on our meter and we want to recalibrate it. We want that to say 104 and now we're going to kind of stick it over here and you can see it reads right around 94 gloss units. Now if we go over here we will take five readings and total them up. So up here it looks like we've got about 83.2. And over in this corner, we're getting about 85.4. And in the middle, it looks like it's about 84.6, 84.7. Looks like only about 81, 81.1 will be generous in that corner. And we see we're still calibrated at 104. And we got a score of 419, which we're gonna divide by five to average for an average of 83.8 as the glossy unit score. Now we're gonna subtract our average of 94, and it looks like we lost about 10.2 gloss units. That is probably one of the biggest losses I've seen. Now look guys, that doesn't necessarily mean this product is bad. In fact, we find some of the prettier products knock down gloss. They go on thick. They're almost like a second clear coat. A lot of times they're just not as great at reflecting light. I can already kind of see that here actually. The reflection is very clean. I think if I use this flashlight, I can probably demonstrate what I mean. It feels like the reflection is very diffuse on this side. And as we move it over here, you can see the reflection pattern is bigger. See how this product responds to isopropyl alcohol. I've got this 70% ISO. And we're gonna spray some on. And I don't score this test. And the cool thing is, you guys can see it's not immediately failing. It is actually clumping together. Now, isopropyl alcohol will not clump like water. It just doesn't have as much uh, surface tension. Once it is able to dissolve the wax, it usually stops clumping altogether while water will always still kind of clump. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna wipe around and see if it will act as a nonpolar solvent. It might take a couple of applications or it might never come off. And we could see that in one pass, it is still bubbling up. So let's see if a second pass gets it. We also saw much the same thing with the turtle wax, uh, seal and shine. It was very resistive to isopropyl alcohol. I think we're starting to see a little breakdown. So we have a puddle over here. Seems to be slowly but surely wiping up. And now we're really seeing it. Guys, this is still very impressive. You could tell much more of it has failed where there's really no more surface tension. But you still see there are areas that are working. So I'm reasonably impressed. I would say that this is fairly resistive to ISO. I would not expect that just by giving your car an isopropyl bath 
that you could say you've decontaminated it and stripped it of the wax. Yeah, there we go, guys. Now you can see it's totally failed. There's uh, maybe little tiny pockets of product left. So that was quite a few soakings in isopropyl. One of the things we can do now is get our handy little gloss meter and see where we are on gloss. And again, 94. It has now been 24 hours and we are ready to take a look at the slickness and the visual appeal. Talking about slickness, I can tell you this feels very, very slick. It might not be quite as slick as that poly seal was, but it is very impressive. In my videos, a lot of times I reference this Mustang as an example of slickness, and that's because it's covered with Wolfgang Deep Gloss 3, and it is very, very, very slick. Now, I'm not saying that that product is the best overall. It's just one that I really like, and it happens to be incredibly slick. So the last coat 2, by comparison, is not quite as slick, but it is very good. So I will definitely give it a pass and one point. Let's talk about visual appeal. I have placed this little felt that I use to clean lenses right along the seam where the product, the last code two ends and the control begins. That seam is on the left side of the cloth. You should be able to see a nice clear line between the product and the duller looking control. I have to say that the last code two very clearly gives you a deeper and prettier coat. I really enjoy how that looks. It has got a very nice depth. It looks very deep, very pretty. I really, really like the way that looks. And we can zoom out a little bit to give you a broader view. Sometimes these things are hard to see in camera. That deep candy depth really makes it feel like there's a second clear coat on top of that paint and it just looks fantastic. So definitely a point for the visual quality. One of the things people ask me a lot is to show them this gloss meter, but on the hood. And the problem is the gloss meter is totally flat. A lot of people seem to do tests on the hood with, in fact, this exact meter. If the product is any good, it's just sliding all over the place, so you can't let it go. And when you're holding it with your hand, even if you're trying to be really, really tough, you're trying to balance it in the middle of the unit, you know, it wobbles. So it's hard to get a good reading. You can see the middle of the unit is where it does its work. This part's a little flatter, and there's no wax there, so I bet it stays. If you guys are enjoying this video, I wanted to remind you that there is a website with all these results and it's down below in the description. Secondly, I wanted to ask if you're enjoying the video to please remember to subscribe, click like and leave me a nice comment. And it's really nice when you guys suggest products that I may have not known about. So all of that is just really cool and I hope to see you guys there. All right guys, we are now at the durability testing portion of our video. We'll be using this panel here in combination with Adam's car shampoo, which we have tested to be pH neutral. And I'll link a video right here in your top corner where you can see that testing. We're also gonna use Adam's foam cannon to deliver our foam. It's been diluted and set up the same way as every test. And we're gonna use the same sponge that we've been using. Now to remind you guys, this is the side with the product and then this side is purely control and then the very bottom there is also the control. Let's first see just how hydrophobic the last coat is. And then I'll show you guys how we do our wash. The first thing we do is grab our foam cannon. We stick it onto our pressure washer nozzle. We make sure it's dialed in correctly and then we apply the foam. Then we grab our foam pad and we apply some foam to it. Give this a nice wash. Now I'm sure you guys can already see the line that's forming on this side that is the separator between the control and the treated. So let's wash it all off in our first rinse. So we can see the top is clearly hydrophobic, but that line below is where it's like the control side. So at this point, I'm just gonna keep washing and I'll take pauses as interesting things happen and we learn more about this product. All right, here we are at wash number 10. Let's see how it works out. That is not bad at all. It's starting to degrade maybe a little bit. Very impressive for 10 in. All right guys, let's do the 20th wash together. Yes, I am up to 20.
So let's try rinsing it off, number 20. So you can see there are definitely some dead areas, but the product is still overall working. It's much better than the control. Let's look at the control. So let's keep going. Let's see when this thing eventually fails. And let's do number 25. Let's blast it. Yeah, so there are definitely bigger dead spots now. But you can still see it's working much quicker than the control. Very impressed overall. Let's do number 30. So there's what our control looks like, and let's try this side again. As you can see, we're getting much closer to the control. Let's do a shot across it. So guys, what were my final thoughts on this product? It is very impressive at 38 washes. There are other products in other categories that have more durability, certainly spray coatings, things like that. I will say for the ease of use and the cost and everything else, it does make sense. You could really compare it to like the Turtle Wax Seal and Shine. I think the difference between those two products is really gonna be whether you prefer to retain more gloss and have a little less durability, which would be the Turtle Wax. And then if you were gonna use the last coat 2.0, I think it would be because you cared more about the depth and the candy coat, which is very visually pleasing, but maybe not quite as glossy. And then you wanted the extra durability. But overall, I wanna say this is just a really great product. I could definitely see myself using it. It has an application and an arsenal. I wish they could get the gloss up a little bit. I was a little disappointed in that area, but the durability was really impressive for a spray product. So easy to use, that is really cool. So whatever they're doing, it's working. I would love to know what's in it. Unfortunately, when I pulled up the SDS sheet, it said that everything except for ethylene glycol was a proprietary ingredient. My guess is maybe it has some SiO2 in it. So if you know what's in it, um, I'm gonna do a little digging too, and if I find that, I'll add it to the notes in the video. So other than that, guys, definitely a cool product. I can see why people are interested in it and why people are excited about it and writing all the reviews and talking about it on forums and on Reddit and everywhere else. It's definitely a interesting product and the durability impressed me a lot. Check it out for yourself. As usual, Amazon links in the bottom. And of course, please do remember to subscribe, click like and leave me a nice comment. I do love all of that stuff and I try to talk to all of you and I will catch you guys again real soon.